the CDG BizCast. I'm your host, Christian Gonzalez, co-owner of Creativity Design Group, a digital marketing firm in Houston, Texas. Today's episode is about the recent ongoing brawl between WordPress founder Matt Mullenweg and hosting company WP Engine, based out of Austin, Texas. The purpose of this episode is not to demean either side, but to talk about exactly what happened between both parties and how this spat is making a negative impact on customers and developers everywhere who use WordPress. Creativity Design Group is a firm whose web design business is built solidly on WordPress. So we want to shine some light on this matter to keep our own clients informed about the many issues that this dispute has created and could potentially impact them later. Joining me today to discuss is Warren Lang Nida of Warren Lang Nida Digital Consulting based out of Germany. He is a fellow WordPress developer with several years of experience who discovered his passion for web design way back in 1998 when he built his first website. His wonderful talents have led him to be a successful agency owner today. Welcome, Warren. It's a pleasure to have you on BizCast. Thank you for joining us. Hello, Christian. Thank you very much for the invitation. Yes, it's my pleasure to have you on the show today as our special guest. And you're also our first guest we've ever had from Germany, I must add. Well, you'll have to have more European guests in the future. (laughs) Yes, of course. We love all our business owners worldwide. To start out this episode, I first want to recap what's going on between WP Engine and Matt Mullenweg to educate our listeners who are not familiar with the matter. This dispute has roiled the WordPress community, but for those people who are not web designers or who are not familiar with WordPress, maybe they have a WordPress website. You know, they're not too involved in the community because web design isn't their thing. I want to go ahead and talk more about what's going on to educate that portion of our listeners about what's going on with this matter and how it is creating a major impact on people who are using WordPress, especially when it comes to WP Engine. WordPress powers 43.4% of the world's websites. That's almost half. That's very close to being half. If anything were to happen to that percentage of websites, there goes nearly half of the internet. Many people are not familiar with WordPress and the average consumer certainly isn't. It is a content management system. It allows people to build websites, manage their content, manage the overall look and feel and functionality. It's basically what's under the hood of the majority of the websites that you see online. And what happened was that in mid-September, Matt Mullenweg, the founder of WordPress and also a native of Houston, Texas, I must add, wrote a blog post on WordPress's official website calling WP Engine a, quote, a cancer to WordPress. And he made several criticisms about it. He criticized them for disabling the ability for users to see and track their revisions. WP Engine cites that these revisions take up a lot of database resources and therefore they have to put limits on how many revisions users can go back and make. And this is revisions on blog posts, pages, and really any type of custom content that's put out on a WordPress website. And Mullenweg also believes that because this feature is so vital to the user experience that WP Engine is basically infringing on their ability to go back and make changes when necessary. So if they make a major change, but they decide they want to go back later, they're not going to be able to do so unless they contact WP Engine support. And how did WP Engine respond to this? They decided to send out a cease and desist letter to Mullenweg and his company Automatic to withdraw all their comments. Things were already starting to heat up. Mullenweg already had this post public for the whole world to see. And he also continued to express his feelings relentlessly on X and other social media outlets explaining his displeasure, which was, of course, causing WP Engine to take note as well. The cease and desist letter has several screenshots of his commentary on social media that they felt was detrimental to WP Engine's overall business. In general, they claim that Mullenweg had taken a, quote, scorch earth nuclear approach against WP Engine unless they agreed to pay a significant percentage of its revenues for a license to the WordPress trademark. So the WordPress trademark comes into play now too. Automatic fired back at WP Engine, sent their own cease and desist letter telling them that they had breached WordPress and WooCommerce trademark usage rules. They felt that by using the word WP in their name, it was creating a sense of confusion that WP Engine and WordPress were one and the same. The thing about that is that the abbreviation WP isn't covered by the WordPress trademarks. The letters WP are not trademark protected. The WordPress Foundation had to up 
update their trademark policy page to reflect this. And they also called out WP Engine for allegedly creating confusion amongst the consumers. On the page, it was written that, quote, the abbreviation WP is not covered by the WordPress trademarks, but please don't use it in a way that confuses people. For example, many people think WP Engine is WordPress Engine and officially associated with WordPress, which it's not. They have never once even donated to the WordPress Foundation despite making billions of revenue on top of WordPress. Now, that's just a direct quote from the WordPress Foundation. That's not my opinion. That's just what they wrote word for word on their trademark policy page. Moving forward, Mullenweg decided to fight back again by banning WP Engine from accessing their repository. So WordPress.org has a repository where themes and plugins are distributed to WordPress users. The repository is not part of the WordPress core, so therefore there's no way for a programmer to code in this repository to give anybody access to it. There is code in WordPress's core that communicates back to the mothership WordPress.org in order to get access to this repository. Not only are WP Engine websites banned and blocked from accessing themes and plugins, they're also unable to receive updates for said plugins and themes, thus creating major security risks. When you don't have your plugins and themes up to date, or your core for that matter, which is very important to keep updated, then it opens doors for all sorts of security flaws. Updates ensure that security holes are fixed and patched and that there's no way for people to come in and hack your website and steal information through an exploit. Ensuring that everything stays up to date prevents such exploits from happening. There was a brief reprieve where WordPress.org temporarily gave access back to the repository to WP Engine users, but it was only for that one day. As of now, at the time of this taping, which is October 3rd, that's the day we're taping this episode, WP Engine customers have now been blocked from the repository just like before. They can no longer download any plugins or themes and can no longer keep anything updated. So at this point, the only thing WP Engine customers can do is work with WP Engine directly or their web developers to help keep things up to date using various workarounds, which we will discuss in just a moment. First, Warren, my first question for you is, what's your overall opinion about this ongoing spat between WordPress and WP Engine? How do you feel about this? <laughs> I think it's a little disturbing, to be honest. I mean, I've been using WordPress for more than 10 years. Prior to that, I was using Drupal and Joomla. These are also both open source website systems, uh, CMS. And I've seen a lot of things. I've never seen anything like this. And yeah, I think it really caused a huge rift in the community, which was entirely unnecessary. <laughs> it's uh, really quite shocking that this happened. Yes. I I agree. It is definitely unprecedented. I've never seen anything like this myself either. And I have been working with WordPress for nearly 10 years now. And it's always been a great community. The web developers and designers who work with WordPress are WordPress professionals. They always look out for each other. And I notice that especially on social media, like on X, for example, that's where you and me both met. And people were just expressing their concerns about what could potentially happen moving further. Because many people feel that Matt Mullenway has engaged in warfare against WP Engine, which unfortunately, in my opinion, is quite true because he's blocked them from all of WordPress.org's free resources. They can't keep their websites up to date. It's creating a lot of risk for a huge number of customers because WP Engine does have a very large customer base. And I also need to make a quick disclaimer that Creativity Design Group is an affiliate partner with WP Engine, and we do receive commission for sales anytime we make referrals for them. I just need to make Make that disclaimer. Anyways, yes, I agree. When it comes to things like this, how do you think WordPress developers should handle this situation? You and me are both in the field. We've both been working with WordPress for a long time. We both have our own satisfied customers. They like WordPress. We like using WordPress because of the versatility. I mean, you can build almost any website with it. I prefer it over other platforms like Wix and Weebly, which are just poor platforms in general. But how do you think WordPress developers should 
should handle this situation? Well, I think one of the benefits that developers in open source have, so WordPress developers, Drupal developers, you know, it's an open source system. So you're not fenced in if you were working for Wix or Squarespace or any of these builder block systems. So the community is made up of people who can code, people who can actually write PHP, which is you know, really the backbone of the web. People who can code plugins, which support the functionality of WordPress websites, people who can develop themes, so the design. So the WordPress community is made up of highly competent people when it comes to developers. So, you know, we're used to having that plan B. It's part of our job to assume the website could go down tomorrow. And what's our plan? So, you know, this was quite unprecedented that WP Engine was blocked from the repository, but it wasn't a complete, you know, knockout for them because they have professionals there, they have a backup plan. I think the people that really hurt were the people who are working there, who, who are working and doing a good job and feel really attacked, and most important, the customers. So when it comes to handling the situation, you've got to explain technical things or perhaps actually business and political things to customers who just want to know why their website isn't updated. So you've got the customer service people handling the situation. And I think that's a much harder job than the developers. So because as you say, the community is the most important part and the biggest part of the WordPress community are our customers. Because if they don't trust us, they will go to Wix and Squarespace and anywhere else. And then, then you know, this 43% starts going back down. So yeah, we have to handle the situation with both hands. And I think the, the largest hand holding is keeping that trust with our customers because they rely on their websites to do business. They don't care about the political or business spat within WordPress. That is not their problem <laughs> and we shouldn't make it their problem. That's exactly right. They don't care about that. It doesn't concern them, at least not until their website goes down. If their website ends up going down due to a potential hacking attempt that was caused by a hole from an outdated plugin or thing, then they're going to start to get concerned. And this is not in any way WP Engine's fault. They did not choose to block themselves from WordPress's repository. They now have customers who are pretty much at risk of who knows what. You know, we don't know what could happen. It's all contingent on making sure that they get access back to the WordPress repository so they can keep their stuff up to date. However, even though they cannot update directly through the dashboard or install new plugins or themes through the dashboard anymore, there's still FTP access. For those out there who don't know what that means, that simply means that you can use a file manager to upload files through the directories on your website versus having to do through the WordPress backend. When it comes to these things, as long as you have FTP access, you can download your plugin that you want to use, the updated plugin or the new one you want to use, or the theme from the WordPress repository by going to wordpress.org directly or from the developer's website, get that zip file, and then with FTP access, upload it into your website without having to go through the dashboard. On the dashboard is where you can't do it. It's simpler to do it this way, but as long as you have FTP access, you can upload your themes and plugins that way. It is a little bit more cumbersome to do it this way. I'm sure you and me both agree on that. But as long yeah. as there's no access in the dashboard, this is the only way it's going to get done, unfortunately. Yes. And also for our listeners out there who don't know what open source means, that simply means that the source code, the programming code for a piece of software is out there in the public for anyone to take and modify as long as they follow the general public license agreement. They abide by the rules of that agreement. They can contribute code to it. They can add features in. That's pretty much what people do with plugins. They're writing plugins so they can extend WordPress and go beyond what the core of it offers because the core itself only just has the functionality to create pages and posts and things like that. It's the plugins that really bring a WordPress site to life. And for those of you who don't know what plugins are, think about what a program is. An application for Windows, a software program is to Windows as what a plugin is to WordPress. You could think of it like that. Or an app on your phone you know, an app is to 
iOS or Android as what a plugin is to WordPress. That's an easier way to put it. It's just an extension of the overall core, adding more functionality. And open source software allows you to get the source code. And if you know how to program, if you know the language of whichever open source piece of software you're dealing with is written in, you can contribute to it. Other examples of open source software include Inkscape, which is a graphics editor, and then GIMP, which is the free alternative to Photoshop. Those are just some examples I can think. They all have communities where people can contribute their own code and extend the software programs. And WordPress is just like that. That's what plugins are. The code to all these plugins is publicly accessible. When you download them and you open it up in a text editor, you can see the lines of PHP code that the software is written in. Good explanation. But yes, thank you for your insight. I think that's the right way that WordPress developers should handle this. Now, how do you think this dispute's going to affect WordPress as a whole moving forward? That's a bigger question. I think what we saw was a bad decision. I mean, this was a business and possibly legal issue that was brought to the community. And, you know, this is just not the way it's done. Unfortunately, I mean, this isn't really, this isn't a, a new issue, I think, with companies that become quite large and are able to be disrupted. I mean, we've seen this sort of disruption in industry before. I mean, the telcos, Apple, Netflix, we can make phone calls with WhatsApp. We can watch movies that are produced by Apple or Amazon. And, you know, traditionally, these were not telephone companies. You know, WhatsApp was not a telephone company. And Apple and Amazon, they did not make movies or television shows. So these traditional businesses, they get disrupted if they don't stay agile. And I think a problem with WordPress is it's 20 years old now, and one person is still basically running the show. If you compare this with Drupal, Drupal was founded by one person as well, only two years before WordPress, but they are managed and governed by a board of directors. It's not one person. WordPress, because it's open source, can be forked, which means that we can have new versions of WordPress. The best example is Classic Press. When WordPress moved from a classic editor into a block editor, this was version 4.9, it was forked or separated into a different version. It still exists today. It's called Classic Press. A lot of people use this. Some of my clients use it as well. It's identical to WordPress, but instead of the blocks, there's just the classic editor that we used to have. There are also, in the last couple of weeks, many new versions of WordPress, which are looking quite good. <laughs> They're identical to WordPress. One is Pup. Press. So what this means is that if the community is not happy with how WordPress goes forward, then people could start developing their own forks of WordPress. The problem here is that will mean that maybe your hosting company has one version, another hosting company has a different version, and then you will get different versions of WordPress. So I think it's for them the best that they resolve this situation so that we can move forward. Forward. I wholeheartedly agree with that because that would have been the better resolution than going full-scale war with each other, right? This would have been a more civilized approach to the whole ordeal. I think so. I understand that some of the problem was that WordPress has a vague contribution plan called Five for the Future, and you are supposed to donate 5% of your time or revenue, but it is not very transparent, and it is also not required. Drupal, on the other hand, has a different program that is based on credits. Now, every time a developer is in the system and pushes something into the system, they are credited. So it's much more transparent. And I think if this was the big issue that WordPress is claiming it is, then they need to make this sort of contribution either much more transparent or it must be decided, is it mandatory or not? Because at the moment, it is not mandatory. The lack of setting some ground rules like that does open doors for more problems. So they expect developers and hosting companies to donate a portion of their income, but at the same time, they don't require it. So I don't really understand why there even is an issue to begin with, because if it's not mandatory, then there's really nothing to fight about unless there's a strict requirement that says, that if you make X amount of money, you have to donate X percentage of it back 
back to the WordPress foundation. It's there. They're saying that's what they want you to do, but they don't enforce it as a strict requirement to use WordPress. This is very true, and it is odd because this came out of the blue, and I believe, as many do, that this is just a smokescreen for larger financial things. <laughs> <laughs> and I think WP Engine is just being targeted because of their size. And there's nothing stopping perhaps one day a larger company like WP Engine simply taking over WordPress. I mean, why not? And I think maybe that is also part of maybe the fear. They're all businesses and there's no guarantee that WordPress, you know, survives in its current form. And I think maybe some of that fear is also what started this. That's very true. That could potentially happen one day. And depending on how you feel about that, that's either a good or a bad thing. If WordPress were to be taken over by a hosting company, I mean, there's already a lot of fears of content industry distribution being held by one company. This is very common in media industries too. I know that the Justice Department here in the U.S. often watches acquisitions such as whenever cable companies purchase TV studios, they watch that like a hawk because they're worried that the cable company will have too much control over how that's distributed. They want to make sure that the content that they own is also distributed to competitors too. So in a case like this, it could happen, but there would be a lot of regulation involved to make sure that WP Engine doesn't keep WordPress all to themselves, that other hosting companies out there are able to access it with the same amount of privilege as WP Engine does. Yes, I agree. <laughs> and that actually leads me right into my next question. Now, how do you think this dispute will affect hosting companies that utilize WordPress moving forward? Well, I work for some other hosting companies. It's different in Germany, but, you know, immediately there was this question, okay, if WP Engine is not allowed to call themselves WP or use the WP, if they're not allowed to say that they offer managed WordPress, WordPress hosting. Well, every large hosting company says that that's what they do. So what can you say? You know, can you say we offer the content management system WordPress that is not ours, but will help you host it? It just seems kind of silly. In Germany, most of my clients' websites are on a shared hosting. So this is not managed hosting, but included in your monthly hosting fee, you can choose whatever content management system you would like, Drupal, Joomla, Typo3, WordPress, whatever you like, and it's included in the price and there is no discussion. Now, managed is much more expensive and, you know, every managed hosting offers perks and different services. So I think, you know, going forward, it could mean that certain hosting companies then focus on certain perks or there's more pressure on them to diversify in what they offer. It could affect prices. Hosting is a commodity item. You get a lot of hosting, you know, one price for the entire year and managed hosting really fights against that because they offer so much, but it could affect competition. And unfortunately, it could take away from what's really important about WordPress is that it's robust. It is a stable core and businesses rely on that stability so that they can do business. If you start competing on the core, that could be problematic for people's websites. That's true. There should be some level of consistency going on when it comes to development of WordPress, especially since developers are starting to fork it now and create their own variants of it. That is going to create a little bit of a problem when it comes to keeping things streamlined because each different variation is going to have its own unique features to it. Yes, very true. And my biggest fear with WordPress being that I've been using it for so long and that my agency runs on it just like yours does is that that if a buyout does happen with private equity or something like that, that WordPress ends up becoming a commercial product. It's no longer free to distribute. It's no longer free to the public. And it ends up becoming a closed source product. That's my, in a nutshell, overall biggest fear of what could happen to WordPress if a buyout or a sale was to happen. I think the biggest loser, one of the biggest losers probably would be the customers because they would have to pay more for their websites. And yes, you would lose the whole 
community, which is really important, and your ability to change the code. This is something that's extremely important with open source, and you can't do this with a paid license or a licensed content management system. I've worked with these for many years, and you just can't change anything in them. So WordPress gives you that freedom to create, which is wonderful as a developer, but it really keeps the price low for, I mean, my business is mostly small business, nonprofits, schools, and they don't have to pay a license fee is really important. And that could change. But on the other hand, we both go back to the previous century. So last century, we were building websites and they got built and they were on the internet. You know, 25 years later, there's still websites and they're still on the internet. And most of the tools we used back then, except for perhaps HTML, those tools are all gone, but we still have websites. So if WordPress was to end next week, we would still have websites, you know, they would just be in a different content management system. But I don't think that the end of any one CMS means the end of the websites. So I think we're safe there, but yeah, we'll see. If WordPress were to end overnight, those WordPress websites would still be alive and well. They just all wouldn't have access to a public repository anymore. Let's say, for example, if WordPress went out of business, the websites themselves would still run. They just would not have access to plugins or themes, kind of like what WP Engine's going through right now, because said repository would not exist anymore. That would be part of WordPress corporate, which in the scheme of this example is out of business. But the websites would yes. still live on. They just wouldn't be able to stay updated in terms of new versions of the core themes and plugins. That is is very true. And I mean, I have seen websites, I've, I have clients who are running on, they were <laughs> running on, you know, WordPress 4 or WordPress 5. And the websites are still running completely good. Now, they needed to all be completely updated because it's a security problem. It's, it's very easy to be hacked. But as you say, the websites haven't been updated in seven years, but they're still there and people can still use them. And I think that's the most important thing when we're building websites is that they work and our clients can do business with this website. So yeah, I think that's the most important thing. We need less uncertainty. We need to hold the community together, which means the WordPress community and our clients. This is really important because any disruption, any distraction from our client risks us losing the client. And we don't need that. We need happy clients that trust us. And we need a happy community with a governance and a code that we trust and then we can do business. Very well said. That's exactly right. The less uncertainties there are in really anything's future, not just WordPress, but anything helps us sleep better at night knowing that we're going to be able to continue doing our jobs. We're going to be able to continue serving our clients. WordPress is still being maintained and that overall their website is still running and the client is still coming back to you regularly for more. Maybe they need another website. They need some maintenance done or they have another project in general to give to you. Being that our agencies mainly use WordPress, we're so connected contingent on it. We want to make sure that it continues to stay there and that our businesses can stay running like well-oiled machines and our customers are not looking for other alternatives. That's the most important thing right there. We talked about a few other examples of CMSs and Wix, Weebly, they are pretty much, as you said, fenced in. Those websites live on their servers. We don't have access to the core of the file. If they were to go out of business tomorrow, we would lose those websites right there. Versus WordPress, the WordPress core is not contingent on WordPress.org being in business. Like I said, it would still continue to live even if WordPress.org and Automatic went out of business tomorrow. Those websites would still go. And on top of that, WordPress is portable. If you need to move from one host to another, you just take the files and database and move them to the other hosting. That's the best thing about it too. It's portable. You can't say that about Wix. No, you cannot. <laughs> Every now and then we get asked for our clients that do know what WordPress and Wix are, they'll ask, why is is WordPress better than Wix? Why is WordPress better than so-and-so? And I basically give them all these key points that I'm telling you. You know, WordPress is portable, it's versatile, and you own your website. The host doesn't own your website like these others do. You know, these other ones, you're paying them to host your website, but if they go under, your website's gone. Now, we've been talking a lot about the WordPress community. They have been doing a great job looking out for
for each other and especially on X I'm noticing that there's still a lot of interaction between other WordPress professionals on X talking about you know how should they handle this how should we move forward with that and everybody's providing solutions and workarounds and that just makes the ecosystem of WordPress professionals much stronger because people are basically treating everybody like their neighbors they are looking out for each other they're trying to make sure that they're able to keep their businesses afloat that's very true but it has split the community so that there are people who stand behind Matt's position and there are those people who stand behind WP Engine maybe not so much the company but just the fact that this was not done in a correct way and that just goes against the whole spirit of what open source is of turning access off and people are leaving automatic now they were given a notice to agree with the CEO or to leave and many people have left in the last couple of days so this WordPress drama is it's not over yet <laughs> oh no the war is far from over it's just begun the fact that he was telling all of his employees to agree with him now again I don't want to take sides on the matter but that is just something that I personally would not be able to handle see the reason why I became a business owner was because I got tired of working for toxic bosses and he just sounds like he's a toxic boss right there he sounds very draconian that sounds like a dictatorship right there honestly speaking telling people that they have to agree with them if they want to keep their jobs I mean that just doesn't sound right if they're leaving I don't blame them they can leave and go start their own firm tomorrow and they'll probably be good as gold yes I think this just makes it more difficult to hold the community together if you're just doubling down on this bad decision but we'll see how it goes we'll see what decision is made first the American election or the WordPress decision <laughs> two big decisions in the next 30 days <laughs> right I'm not too concerned about politics it's more about what's going on in my WordPress community because WordPress is my business it's my profession it's your profession that's gonna have the biggest impact on my own business and at the moment I probably only have one active WP engine client and they are not affected too badly right now but in general in terms of workflows and handling clients what do you think is the biggest impact you have noticed this dispute has had on the WordPress and web design community in general well you know like I said I'm in Europe so we haven't noticed it I mean because we don't have the WP engine here so it's mostly watching now I do have some clients in the United States and you know certainly it's been a conversation and I think you know from the most part you know X Twitter is what it is if you are there you want to talk about things but outside of that platform <laughs> I have the feeling that people don't want to talk about it maybe on one side you don't want to be the next target depending on how this works out now I think as well like I said right at the beginning I don't think people are panicking because this is a normal part of your workflow as you know like you have to prepare for worst case scenario you know what if the server goes down so you have backup you have copies. So if you weren't able to update the website because WordPress connection was gone, well, you would still update them from your own server. You would take then extra care to make sure that everything was updated and you had the added security. But I think people in our business, they're used to that. I mean, I remember the days where there was no cloud. <laughs> the server was in the agency and you made a copy of it. One stayed in the agency. The other, someone took home. Every night it was someone else's turn to take a copy of the server home with you in case there was a fire or a theft. So I think most developers understand this sort of process of keeping backups, of focusing on the client. So I don't think there's been that much in the general community other than discussion, but I'm very sure for the people, you know, working directly at Automatic and the people working directly at WP Engine and their clients that, yeah, this is certainly cause for concern. Concern and but maybe it's important as a wake up call so that we can do better going forward. Yes. Anytime we face an unfortunate event, our biggest takeaways are always what we learn from them. When COVID hit, we learned a lot of oh, new yes. things too. We learned how to work from home. We learned to spend more time with our families and to support local businesses. When this is all over, we're going to have a lot of key takeaways to learn from making backups, making sure you have a contingency plan in case you can't update your plugins, ensuring that you have alternatives available. 
available just in case your website can no longer be sustainable on its existing hosting platform anymore. Those are just some things that we need to take into account. These are takeaways to remember when it's all over, but it's important to be able to identify them right now. Making backups. I tell this to everybody. It's not just for your website, but as business owners, you need to make sure you have backups of every file you work with for any project you're working on. I use OneDrive to store all my client files on for their different projects and all my business documents are on there too. So I could take them with me to multiple computers. And if one of my computers breaks or gets stolen or whatever, then I know that all my data is still in the cloud accessible on another device. And when it comes to updating, here's how I think developers should refine their process for delivering updates. They should bypass the WordPress repository for updates and instead incorporate their own server, their own update server into the plugin or the theme that they have. So there are a few plugins that have updating built into the core rather than having to go through the repository to get updates. That's a good way to make sure things stay up to date in emergency situations like this, wouldn't you say? Yes, that's a good point. And it's certainly something I know that when WP Engine's access was cut off, there were a lot of people reaching out and they had already made backups of uh, repository plugins and themes on their own servers. And I guess this is part of their workflow. And they were sharing links to people who did not have that foresight. So yeah, I think this is a very good point. And, you know, the community has got very talented, very smart, technical people. <laughs> and yeah, I would agree with you that I'm sure this is part of what people do. It's what we do. I mean, so if we're doing this, then I'm sure sure this is also a good idea. And if people aren't doing it, they probably should. After this happened, I won't be surprised if many plugin developers decide to add updating natively to the plugin's core code to avoid situations like this again. I mean, I'm talking about it now. I may have mentioned it before on X to a few other people, but I have a feeling this is probably something that's going to catch on. And because this is a major wake up call for WordPress professionals everywhere, even if they don't use WP Engine, they're watching what's going on and they want to be prepared should anything like this happen to them and their own clients, this is the way to go. Incorporate updating into the core of your plugins and themes without having to deal with the repository. It would basically make WordPress's own updating system obsolete and the only time you'd ever have to use it would be to update the core, really. I think that's a really good idea. Think about Windows, for example. Windows has its own updating system, but it only delivers updates for Windows and other Microsoft-related products. It's not going to deliver updates to third-party apps installed on your computer. It's pretty much the same thing. The third-party apps on your computer, like Google Chrome and Photoshop, for example, they have updates built into the core of their systems. They don't need to rely on a third party to stay up to date. They update themselves, and I think WordPress plugins and themes need to have that ability as well. Yes, I agree. Now I would like to go ahead and close out the episode. Warren, do you have anything else you would like to add that we did not cover? Well, I think, you know, for your listeners, I think... What would be important is if any of your listeners have websites and they're not sure on what they run on, <laughs> I think transparency also means that if you have a website, you understand how it works, what system it's running on, and how you can update it. I always tell my clients this, that I'm here for them. I want to help them, but they should be able to update a website. They should understand the difference between a plugin and a theme. They should be able to help themselves as well because one day I won't be there. And so I think, you know, an important part of business is that you don't rely too much on someone to do something because you should also be able to do it yourself. And I think that's why WordPress is so great, because as a customer, you can learn something, you can learn how to work on a website, and it gives you great joy, <laughs> and it enables you and it empowers you. And I think this is really, really important that we work together. So if you're listening, have never looked at the back end of your WordPress website, then please do this. And it's fun, it's interesting, and it will give you a different perspective on your website. Oh, yes, I agree. I always like to educate all of my clients, too, on what the back end 
end of WordPress looks like because they always ask me, what if I want to change a picture or add some words, but and I don't want to have to call you all the time to do it. So that's when I show them exactly how it works. We normally use Elementor as our page builder and I show them, look, it's a drag and drop builder. The text editor is very similar to Microsoft Word. It's like a watered down version of Microsoft Word and there's no coding required for the most part, you know, unless you need to do some special styling with CSS, but that's usually not the case. Everything's straightforward. It's drag and drop. You can place elements wherever you want to place them. You can place them wherever you want on the page. And if you know how to use Microsoft Word, you'll know how to use the text editor in WordPress. Simple as that. We like to show our clients those things and they like learning. Sometimes they don't have time to do that because they're busy too. They have to manage their own businesses. But when they have a genuine interest in learning how to manage their own website, I always show them exactly what they need to do. And in the end, they feel comfortable doing it. I agree with you. I think it's important for our clients to understand and get to know what CMS their website is running on. WordPress should not be a stranger to people who own WordPress websites. No, I totally agree with you. But yes, thank you once again, Warren, for coming on the show. It was a pleasure having you. You shared a lot of great information that I hope that our listeners, especially those in the WordPress community, will take to heart and remember moving forward because it is a rough time. This dispute has roiled the community, but the important thing is to remember to stay together, look out for each other, and don't become part of the dispute. Don't argue with other professionals over which side you're taking on. Instead, as part of the community, look out for each other, find ways to help each other serve your clients properly, ensure that their websites are running like well-oiled machines, and in the end, see a major customer satisfaction, and the community as a whole is just happy that they're all treating each other like neighbors, looking out for each other. Kind of like what happened here in Houston. Anytime a hurricane hits Houston, the neighbors all look out for each other and help each other out. That's what needs to happen in the WordPress community right now. There should be no fighting, no arguing about whether you side with WP Engine or Matt. Just look out for each other and help each other keep your workflows going smoothly and your business is running. That's my final word on the matter. Sounds like a great final word. I completely agree. Thank you once again, Warren. It was great. Thank you for listening to the CDG BizCast, everyone. Enjoy your WordPress website. Please reach out if you need any assistance. If you're a WP Engine customer, we'd love to help you.